It's the women in basketball talk. Let's go. Shot calling, the shots falling. My crossover leaves the ops crawling. The fans are in all cause my handles are awesome. If you don't think I'm balling, then hand me the ball then. Her story will make history. Watch the long shot hit the three, guaranteed victory. You might wanna stick with me. Headed for the goal, if you roll, set a pick for me. It's the women in basketball talk. Tune in, all facts, no cap. We could talk about stats. It's the women in basketball talk. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Yeah. What's up, WNBA fans? Welcome to a brand new episode of Let's Talk Women in Basketball. I'm your host, Jennifer Porti, and today we are going to discuss trending topics around the WNBA. And later, we're going to chop it up with two-time WNBA champion, three-time WNBA All-Star, and Kansas Sports Hall of Famer, Tamika Dixon. First, let's talk about the Las Vegas Aces forward, Asia Wilson. She has joined a class full of legends as she won the 2022 MVP award for the second time. Asia is the seventh player in WNBA history to win MVP honors more than once. She joins three-time winners Lauren Jackson, Lisa Leslie, and Cheryl Swoops, and two-time MVP winners Cynthia Cooper, Elena Deladon, and Candace Parker. The Las Vegas Aces head coach Becky Hammond has been named the 2022 WNBA Coach of the Year. Hammond becomes the third former WNBA player to win this award joining Sandin Brandello and Susan McConnor Cyril. It doesn't come as a surprise that Becky is this year's Coach of the Year because she helped coach the Las Vegas Aces into winning this year's WNBA Commissioner's Cup. Her team is also tied with the best record in the league. And they had the second highest offensive ranking in WNBA history. The Aces were second in three-pointers made this season, and they are headed to this year's WNBA Finals. Becky has proven that she's a force to be reckoned with when it comes to the game of coaching. In other WNBA news, the Atlanta Dreams guard, Ari McDonald, has accepted a job with the University of Arizona as director of recruiting operations, but she will continue to fulfill her WNBA commitment with the Dream. She will oversee all recruiting logistics, assist with on-campus visits, manage recruit information and social media content in Arizona. For those who don't remember, Madonna was one of the best players in Arizona history. She was an All-American and Pac-12 Player of the Year in the 2020-2021 season. And she led the Wildcats to a national championship, which they lost to Stanford. Madonna also had the highest scoring average in school history. Now let's talk about who's taking on the Las Vegas Aces in this year's WNBA Finals. The Connecticut Sun has advanced to the WNBA Finals after knocking off the defending champions, the Chicago Skies. For those of you who don't remember, the Chicago Skies previously eliminated the Suns in the 2021 WNBA Semis Finals game. So it doesn't come as a surprise that the Sun was looking for revenge. The Suns overcame an 11-point deficit in the fourth quarter, beating the Skies 72-63 on Thursday night. The Sun will take on the Las Vegas Aces in Las Vegas, this Sunday on ABC. In our next segment, we're going to chop it up with two-time WNBA champion Tamika Dixon, so stay tuned. You're listening to Let's Talk Women in Basketball, the number one podcast show for today's women's basketball fans with former and current players from your favorite team discussing all things women's basketball. This is the place for you. You can find us on Spotify, Anchor, Instagram, and Facebook, at Let's Talk Women in Basketball. Welcome back to Let's Talk Women in Basketball. I'm your host, Jennifer Porti, and right now we are joined by two-time WNBA champion, three-time WNBA All-Star, and Kansas Sports Hall of Famer, Tamika Dixon. How are you doing today, Tamika? I'm good, Jen. How are you? Good. Thanks so much for joining. I just want to say it's an honor to have you on the show. I, I grew up watching you. You're one of my favorite shooting guards of all time. So thanks so much for this. Oh, no problem. I appreciate it. Thank you. You de- you starting to date me now, but I appreciate the love. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. 
<laughs> so could you could you take us back to your earliest memory of playing basketball? Earliest memory of playing ball, I probably was three, four years old. Um, oh, wow. My father, yeah, my father at the time was a uh, pretty good basketball player in his own right. Um, and he was, uh, his senior year in, in college, he was leading the nation in scoring at American University. He was a projected lottery pick, but in those summers, uh, he would come home and I would be in the gym with him all summer. So, you know, oh, wow. I got a chance to experience the game very early on just and his journey, watching his journey and yeah. watching what he was going through. And um, that's kind of probably my earliest, you know, memories of of the game of basketball. OK. Um, did he or dad get drafted in the NBA at one yes. point? Yeah, he did. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting story. Um he was a projected lottery pick. So he was mm -hmm. projected to go top 10 in the NBA draft that year or his senior year and 10 games into his senior season, he tore his ACL. Oh, um, wow. So, yeah. So it kind of yeah. was a, you know, back then during those times, um, you know, you tear an ACL, that's kind of like a career ending injury. Yeah. Um, but he was able to fight back. He, he was drafted um, to the Cavaliers. He played uh, two years um, in the NBA and any, you know, he was able to go overseas and, and, uh, and make some money internationally he played in Argentina, Italy, and France. Wow. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, his story, but it would have been amazing to be able to see what he could have done had he been healthy going into, you know, an NBA, you know, season or NBA career. Definitely. In, in high school, you won two consecutive state titles and you was MVP for both of those title games. And you right. still managed to become honorable student for those student athletes who are out here watching. How were you able to manage being a successful student as well as a dominated athlete? I think for me, um, I was very focused. I remember not immediately though. Uh, uh, it took some time. <laughs> Um, I remember my sophomore year in high school, we had moved from the, uh, as a small town called Westfield, which is actually where I reside now. And we moved to Linden, where, is where I finished my uh, high school career at. And I was trying to find, you know, figure myself out, you know, mm -hmm. because I had grown up in a town all my life. So I knew everybody in that town and to go, you know, my start my sophomore year out in high school not knowing anybody in a new town and you know so it was it was a little different for me so um initially my sophomore year I struggled a little bit because I was kind of trying to find you know find my friends find where I belong in, in that town in that city um and I remember basketball kind of was my saving grace because I had met some some players um, on the team early on and I had built a bond with some of the guys that would play down at the park right down the street from my house uh -huh. and so that was kind of that was kind of like my saving grace so I didn't want to leave that park yeah. I stayed at that park all the time so uh, my sophomore year in high school my grades kind of suffered a little bit uh -huh. uh, but my father he kind of told me you know you you got to figure out what you want to do and then figuring out what you, what you want to do you, you're going to either focus on your studies or you're going to, I'm going to take the game of basketball away from you. And that was my sophomore year in high school. Oh, so wow. once he, he, yeah, once he gave me that ultimatum, I was like, I better pick it up. <laughs> and from, <laughs> yeah. from that, cause he, he knew that was the one thing that would, would, that would keep you know, you would, going. Yeah, yeah. It would, it would destroy me if he took the game away. So yeah. once, once he did that and gave me that ultimatum, it was kind of like, I was I was good with that and 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 uh I was an honorable student from that moment on. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. You you had 300 recruitment letters. What made yeah. you decide to go to University <laughs> of Kansas? Um it's that's an interesting story too. Um I was a bit of a black panther back then. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, you know, I kind of said that I, um, you know, and I had the heavy hitters like 
recruited me to Tennessee, to Connecticut, to mm -hmm. all the heavy hitters, but I wanted to play for a black coach. Um, so all the five, the five coaches that the five uh, college visits, campus visits that I took were all black coaches. Um, oh, wow. And yeah, um, the University of Kansas had one of the best, which was Marion Washington at yeah. the time. Sir, she played, or uh, she had a 37 year uh, college coaching career at the University of Kansas. And at the time she was, you know, one of her and her and uh, Coach Stringer were like probably the two premier black coaches at the time. Um, and, and that was, that was the reason, I mean, she, she stood out, you know, to me, um, as all the, uh, all the coaches at the time did, but, yeah. um, we just created a unique bond very early on. She came to my house and had a home visit and the, the experience and just the connection that she created with my family, um, yeah. you know, it, it, it just was kind of like. I knew that this connection was supposed to be the one, you know, yeah. to, to last. And, uh, you know, had the home visit here. She connected with my family and friends here. And then I flew out to Kansas and the connection that I had with the team and, you know, just the environment, the atmosphere. Yeah. Um, Kansas at the time was a team that was consistently in the top 20 and just a couple of players away from, you know, getting to the next level. Um, I just thought it was a great opportunity for me. So that is the reason I chose the University of Kansas. Okay. So I have to talk about your glory days. I'm, I'm a Los, big <laughs> Los Angeles Sparks fan. And I know right. you played for the Houston Commons, but the, the LA Sparks <laughs> was, your, was your glory days. Let's, yeah. let's talk about your glory days with the Sparks. What was your so, experience like in, in with, with the Los Angeles Sparks organization? Um, amazing. Uh, um, it was, it was amazing. I, I, to, to be, have an opportunity to, to be a part, excuse me, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, to have an opportunity to be a part of an organization that, um, the, just the, the ambiance, you know, it, if you yeah. start with the, the, the Lakers, you know, and just having, a, having that connection with Dr. Buss and being a part of that whole thing. And um, just just an amazing experience. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, you guys was dominating. Yeah. You guys yeah. had Lisa Leslie, Delisha Milton Jones, uh, Nikki Teasley, right. Natasha Byers. Oh my right. gosh, that that whole squad! Like I was in front of the TV every game, just anxiously waiting to see what you guys are gonna do next. Yeah, right. I mean, those were probably one of the best times of your life probably yeah it, it definitely yeah. was it was an amazing amazing time um it was a sisterhood we we created a a, a bond we it i mean the the things that we were able to accomplish as a team just just incredible just amazing and uh yeah. to this day you know we can we can all i can call any one of them and they'll you know they'll be right there for me so yeah i, I think we were an amazing team. We had so much talent um, and we, was, we were a selfless group, meaning that, you know, it, it didn't really matter who scored, didn't really matter, you know, any, none of the accolades actually mattered to us. And yeah. I think that's what, that's what made us so special. And that's what made us so successful um, because we got, we had some, some straight up hoopers on that team. Yeah. And, it was, you know, it was a squad. any given year you, you have three or four, all-stars you know on that mm -hmm. team it's like we were competing for an all-star spot within our team so you know it just it was an amazing group of women and I'm, I'm just so so happy that I was in, and blessed to be a part of that you know that organization yeah. with those women yeah let's let's talk about the evolution of the WNBA how has the WNBA changed since your playing days um I think uh, it's been an evolution, you know, obviously I think when you, when you have a league um, and, you know, when we started the league in 97, there was minimal exposure to women's basketball, really, you know, mm -hmm. um, especially at the professional level, there was no exposure um, in the United States to professional women actually playing. Yeah. Um, 
So today's today's professional athlete in the WNBA has actually grown up watching or being having an opportunity to watch women play professionally. And I think um, that's actually helped the advancement of the game. Yeah. Um, but I think the evolution of the game is, is, is growing tremendously. I think the women, um, you know, are getting better because they're playing at younger ages. Um, yeah. They're exposed to, you know, a lot of a, a lot better training, better, you know, better mm-hmm. everything because they're doing it at a younger age. Um, and that, and that's just showing later on in life for them, um, you know, as they excel and as they grow in the sport. So, you know, the, from an athletics perspective, you got a lot, you know, you, you're, you're seeing a lot more athleticism and stuff in the game. I think that's great. But then on the business side, it's also growing. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there, you know, there are changes to the collective bargaining agreements and, mm-hmm. you know, the more ownership that's really, really buying into the women's game and putting their dollars, you know, um, where it makes sense. Um, and really bolstering, you know, when you look at something about somebody like the Las Vegas Aces uh, with the with the ownership that they have and the buy-in that he's created over there. And um, you get excited about where the game is going, um, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I love where it's going. The direction that it's going is, is awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I wanted to, I wanted to ask, what is your proudest accomplishment? Proudest accomplishment? You mean uh, basketball-wise? It could be wise or? off the court or on the court. It can be either or. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, there, there are a lot of great accomplishments that I'm proud of. Mm-hmm. I think uh, athletically, it definitely would be uh, just being able to compete at the highest level um, for those championships. I think, you know, that that's too those championships are too I put them pretty high up on a totem pole for me uh-huh. um but there but there are a lot you know I haven't really had a chance to really really reflect on what the proudest moments are um but there are there were there are a ton of just accomplishments and accolades and things that I've been able to accomplish that um you know I still haven't fully grasped <laughs> yeah yeah. What's what's the best advice you've been given? Um, the best advice I've been given is to, just to keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in life sometimes, you know, or people can view us, you know, and say that, you know, we've reached the pinnacle of success, uh, especially as a professional athlete. Um, but they don't see the struggles and the, you know, all the things, all the no's and all the, you know, all the the negative things that we yeah. had to overcome to get to those positions. Um, so I say, keep going, you know, cause everybody's story every has, is, is filled with some of those things. And, you know, the difference between somebody succeeding and somebody failing is the fact that they maybe just didn't keep going. Yeah. So, definitely. yeah. So, that, so, that's, so that's what I would say. Yeah. Just keep going. You never hey. know. Who's the toughest player to ever guard you? Toughest player to ever guard me. Hmm. There were some tough ones. I mean, uh, Cheryl was tough. Cheryl was a tough defender. Cheryl Swoops. Mm-hmm. Uh, T-Spoon was tough. Um, a lot of people don't talk about it, but Deanna Nolan was tough. Oh, yeah. Her. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, I forgot about her. Yeah, she's one that a lot of people don't talk about, don't get, yeah. get a lot of recognition. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, so there was some some tough. Vicky Johnson was a tough defender. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, it was some 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 guards that get up in you and make you really really work. I think those are those are a couple. Yeah, and who's the toughest player you had to guard? The toughest player and my favorite player <laughs> uh, <laughs> was Andrea Stinson. I thought she. Oh yeah, yeah that was From my Charlotte, favorite. Charlotte yeah, she, yeah, yeah, she was she was tough. Um, I think. I think Stent, uh, them leaving her off the, like the, I think they just did a 30 top WNBA players or something uh-huh. like that a few years ago. And they didn't have her on that team. And I was like, yeah, she was you know, a beast. Yeah. yeah she, it's crazy. Should have been on there. It, it's a couple yeah. players that should have been on there, but yeah, I think, uh, she was, she was a tough guard. She was, she was tough. And, and, 
I think if the WNBA had come a few more, a few years earlier, you probably could have seen a lot of that greatness. Um, yeah. She was kind of towards the end of her career. She still had a very good career, but just think if she was in her prime. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's definitely one that I, I completely respect. Brittany Griner has been detained in Russia. If she was listening to this podcast right now, what words of encouragement would you would you say to her during this tough time? Oh man, it's tough. Um, and uh, you know, there's a little bit of a backstory because BG is actually playing for the club that I I played for oh. the, over in uh, over in Russia. Delisha Milton Jones, we were over there together. Wow. Um, playing on that club um, on that club team, so. I have kind of like an inside perspective on, on uh, some of the things that, you know, some of the things that are happening over there. Um, mm -hmm. But what I would say is, uh, you know, it's unfortunate because obviously, you know, Brittany's just, it's just the wrong place, wrong time, kind of yeah. just caught up in this whole political game. Mm -hmm. um, and it's unfortunate that, you know, her life is the one that's being dangled. Um, yeah you know, for this. So I, you know, if she was listening to me, I would say remain strong, you know, stay in prayer. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're all pulling for her, you know, mm -hmm. to, you know, somehow, um, some way for the United States to, to make an offer or do what they got to do to get her home. Cause we miss her. Yes, definitely. Um, I also wanted to know what is your biggest fear? And why? Biggest fear, failure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I mean, I think that's what drives me. That's what motivates me. Um, and you know, when you reach a certain level of success in every aspect of your life, I think that's the one thing that kind of scares you and keeps you going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, definitely. So, so definitely, definitely failure. And you know, it, it maybe it shouldn't be. Um, you know, because when you think about, especially for me, when I, when I think about, you know, my journey, only a quarter of that is being an athlete, you know, and, and you retire early. I retired at, at 33 and I still got the rest of my life to figure things out, yeah. um, and fail, you know, but fail forward, mm -hmm. you know, trying to figure out what I want to do next and, and, and those things. So. But I think failure was is definitely the thing that keeps me. You know, I don't, I don't know what that 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 word means. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think gonna win the WNBA title this year? Man, man, the Aces look tough. Yeah, they they remind me the most of us. Uh huh. Uh, when I think about our Sparks teams and the swag we played with, the confidence we played uh -huh. with, I think they are the most like we used to be. Um, I think, you know, um, obviously whoever comes out of that Chicago and, um, and, uh, Connecticut, okay. Connecticut matchup is going to be a tough, I, I know they're not just going to give it to the aces. They just got to play, yeah. play for it, especially if Candace and, and Chicago gets back to the finals. Um, but I just, I mean, they're playing at a level right now where I don't know. I don't know if there's anybody yeah. that could beat them. I don't year. think so either. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Chelsea Gray, she's on fire. Yeah, yeah Chelsea, Chelsea yeah. torching people. Yeah, and, and Wilson. She's torching people. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and they all, I mean, you think about, you yeah. know, just Jackie Young and Kelsey. Mm -hmm. Young, I mean, everybody just playing. Yeah, that the, entire just, squad. Just high, the high level, even the people that come on, you got Raquana Williams coming off the bench. I mean, with no conscience. Yeah. It's gonna be tough to it's gonna, it's gonna be tough to be beat real them. tough to beat them. Yeah. You gotta re, you're gonna hoping, really have to beat them. Yeah, I'm hoping that Candace Parker uh, and the Chicago Skies could get back to back titles. Yeah. I'm hoping, yeah. but yeah. I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard. To, yeah, it, and it's a reason why nobody's dev, no, nobody's done that since us. Because yeah, tough. yeah, since 2002. It's, That's it's, crazy. It's tough yeah. to do it. It is tough to repeat. But I think if they get back to that finals, I think they are built to, you know, to compete at mm -hmm. that level. They're built for it. You know, uh, adding uh, Emma Meeseman. I really like her game, too. Solid. Yeah. Um, you know, you got Vandersloot and Quigley in the backcourt, which is just solid, you know, and then you got a nice little bench. So, uh, you know, 
I think the 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 X factor or the key in Chicago's cog would be um Kalia Cooper. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think she got to she has to play. Um and she got to be stable. She can't be up and down. Yeah, she definitely. Gotta, she got to really be consistent. Gotta be consistent. But yeah. I, yeah, but I think it's going to be a, whoever comes out, I think it's going to be a, a heck of a matchup. I think Connecticut got a legitimate shot too. Yeah. Now, yeah. I can't let you go without bringing up the Cowboys because I know you're a Cowboys fan. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm sir. a Cowboys yes, fan. Sir. All right. Do we now. have what it takes to win the Super Bowl this season? I don't know. <laughs> I, I would have to be, I don't know, Jen. You know, we every year we get our every year. Up. Every get that whole up. Get, every year. Boy, they have our hopes on every year and then got to make some mistake. Yeah. You know, I, it's interesting. We, we, I think we, when we built the team, we were okay. And then moving into the preseason, we had all these injuries and then the injury to Tyron, Tyron Smith, that's going to hurt us. Yeah. Um, I think bringing in Jason Peters will help, but Jason is a 40 year old lineman now, you yeah. know, we don't know what we're going to get with Jason. Know his conditioning is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, But I think we have, when we're gonna we're gonna be okay I think we'll be okay now whether we would we're gonna play at the elite level to win a cha- uh, Super Bowl that's yeah. I don't know yeah. I mean that's that's some questionable moves I think Jerry did like to me why do we make I don't know why we signed Gallup to, and gave him all yeah. this money and let Amari it was go a bad deal you I would have killed Amari Cooper and let Gallup go. Yeah. He ain't played in a year. What are yeah. we doing here? We know what we're getting out of Amari. Yeah. You know, I just paid a man. You done paid Gallup all his money. Uh-huh. I don't know. I think, I, I don't know. But CD Lamb going to have to come play this year. Too. Yeah, he definitely have this, to come play. This got to be, be his, his year. year. Yeah. So yeah. We gonna, we, we'll see. I think we'll be, you know, we're, we'll win the games that we're supposed to win. Mm-hmm. Um. Now, the games that people don't think we're going to win, we're going to have to win a few of those. And then, you know, it's it's going to be anybody's game at the, at the end of the year, you know, when we get into that playoffs. But I think we I – th- I still think we're the best team to come out of the NFC East this year. Now yeah, we'll figure out so what too. happens. Yeah. yeah, the Eagles, I think they made some really, really good uh, moves in the offseason. But I, I still think we're we're okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Tamiko, for joining the show. It's a pleasure to have you on, and I really appreciate you coming on to Let's Talk Women in Basketball. No problem, Jen. It's my pleasure. You like family. I remember you being thank around you. all the time, so it's my pleasure to come on, and anything I can do to help you, you know, grow your platform, just let me know. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it for today's episode of Let's Talk Women in Basketball. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Let's Talk Women in Basketball, Facebook at Let's Talk Women in Basketball. Also, be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube at Let's Talk Women in Basketball. Catch you next time.